Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. My name is Ed Holinsky. Glad you could join us here today. Got a very special guest here. Um, this gentleman had quite the, the running back career at NT. Uh, he ended up going into the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame in 2016. Played in his sophomore year, junior year, senior year. Uh, Two-time All-State selection. From now from Detroit via Zoom, Please welcome Jeffrey Gain. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very good, Ed. Thank you so much. Honestly, really big honor to, to be asked to do this. So looking forward to it. And five touchdowns. Unbelievable. And you weren't even the starting tailback that year. Yeah, I think actually that was my junior year. Um, but yeah, that was a, I think that was an overtime game um, that we ended up losing, I, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, by one point. So that was a tough one, but it was a great game. When you, I'm sorry, I got the wrong notes, but somebody on the internet put, put the wrong information on there and what year it was for you. No, no, that's okay. You had a career also that you had four consecutive games of 200 yards or more, and then five in a career. Um, all Western New York, your senior year as a running back, you also punted for the Lumberjacks. 14 straight games of 100 yards or more. Your senior year, total 1,302 yards rushing on 176 carries, which is 22, yard, 22 carries per game on average. And uh, you average 7.4 yards per carry. And you play for Dave Anastasi, and you guys threw the ball around as well. Talk about those years. Talk about how that all happened to you. Well, better yet, how, how that all happened for you. Yeah, so, again, I was just – I think put in a really good position. Um, I was called up as a sophomore, so I got to learn behind some really good players like Aaron Day and, and Todd Warmington. Um, and then my junior year, I kind of stepped into the starting role as a tailback. And um, again, I got to play with Todd, which was fantastic. Unfortunately, my junior year and his senior year, he was out for a few games with a uh, hamstring injury, but um, he really had a big impact on me. And um you know, like any good running back, whether it's in high school, college, or, or the pros, you know, you're as good as your offensive line. So I had some really good guys. We, we were fortunate. We had some really quick offensive linemen too. So um, we did a little bit of, of eye formation and a little bit of option. Um, and then we threw the ball around a little bit too. So yeah, it was, it was a fun offense to be in. Um, you know, as the years kind of went on and the way that offenses have evolved I feel like we were kind of right in the middle of, of run heavy but then transitioning to, to more of a passing offense so I think we had the skill set to do it um, you know Mike Morano was our quarterback and he could certainly throw the ball down the field and we had some good receivers like John Moore and, and um, even our tight ends like uh, Jeff Piscucci were able to kind of get down the field and um, yeah we just had a lot of athletes both on the offensive line and in the backfield. Who was the was was Eric Jancy the the offensive line coach at that time? He was the offensive coordinator. Um, yeah, for my for my junior and senior year. Okay, um, how would you describe your your running style? Were you a slasher? Were you a power runner? Um, a, a speedster? I mean, elusive. Yeah, duck and, I, duck and dodge. <laughs> I, I, yeah, um, so I felt like I ran a little bit like Eddie George. Um, and that I was a little bit more upright in going back and watching film. Um, but in, when I had the opportunity, I felt like I was able to break away and, and get some long runs too. I think I had a few 80 plus yard touchdowns and, um, and things like that, but I didn't avoid contact. Uh, and I, I kind of actually welcomed it when it happened, but um, I always like to kind of mix it up. I think that was one of the things that made me a little bit unique was that I was able to kind of have that three dimension, either the speed, the, the agility or, or the power. So. How was it playing for coach Dave Anastasi? It was again, you know, blessed throughout my whole career. Um, it was fun to be kind of part of his, his last year of coaching as well. Um, but coming in as a sophomore, I've always was, um, I mean, I still am kind of more of an introverted person. Uh, and so, but that ability that coach Anastasi and I, and I heard his interview on here too, and he's so right. He was a teacher and 
I felt like he kind of took me under his wing to a certain extent as a sophomore and um, got me in where he could. And, and, and then really he helped me propel my career in my junior and senior year. So it was really great to, to learn from him and, and gain all that knowledge. Back then, how was the TNT rivalry? Yeah, it was a big deal. I remember, so I've always been a really big um, numbers person. So looking back at, at different things, I, I was reading a magazine, I think it was my junior year, um, might have been my sophomore year, but either way, I was reading a magazine of high school commits to some of the bigger schools, bigger colleges. Um, and I'm not sure if it was a max preps or so, so there was some larger magazine and it was going through different unique high school stats. And one of them was rivalries and some of the longest in the country. And when I saw that TNT was on there, it was, it was a really cool thing. So um, yeah, I mean, to be a part of it, to play in it um, for how much it means to the communities, it was, it was really, really, really cool experience. And was there, three years was, was great. Was there a lot of trash talking on the field during that, those games? Oh, oh yeah. 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 There was a lot of trash talking. I, I'm not a big talker, but, but they definitely were. Um, and, uh, but it, it just made it that much more fun. It really did. Who do you keep in contact with your former teammates? Um, I try to keep in, in touch with, um, as many as I can, I think today what's nice is, you know, with Facebook and the other social media platform, you can kind of keep in touch with not only players, but coaches too. Um, you know, and so I've been in contact with John Moore and Corey Renau and, um, you know, on the social media side with Todd Warmington and coach Jancy. And um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of guys that we played with that we still, you know, even if it's from a distance, still get to see kind of what they have going on in their lives and things like that. So that's really cool. Looking back now, you've been out of high school right now, 22 years or something like that. So you're either in your late 30s or you're 40 years old right about now. When you look back, what do you remember the most about your high school playing days in North Tonawanda? I think kind of like everybody's, their answers too. It's just, it's, it's not so much the games, although some of those kind of stick out. It's, it's the people you played with. It's, you know, TNT week at school and, and you know, not only the, the team, but the student body getting behind that and the parades and um, just really, I mean, I completely attribute to the person I am today to the way that that football program was and is. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's nothing but the fondest memories for me. When you played, were you the type of player that might have said, if I had done this, I would have gotten more yards or if I would have done that? Did you do any second guessing with your game? Um, not so much my game. I think that that kind of instincts take over when you're actually playing. Um, so I wouldn't say my game, but I mean, certainly looking back now, um, you know, you just feel a little bit of regret and that, you know, I wish our teams were, were more successful and, um, you know, you look at how strength and, and, uh, and nutrition is such a big part of, of the sport now. Um, it was kind of just coming on as, as we were, um, wrapping up our careers in the early 2000s, well, the late nineties. But, um, so some of those things I wish that, you know, I would have been at a higher, uh, you know, just, I guess I could have performed better and, and maybe that could have resulted in our team having a little bit more success, but um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think, you know, playing wise, no, I think that's more in instinctive, but I think always looking back, you, you know, you hope that you could have done more to, to be more successful unless, you know, you're like the, the championship team that won it. And that's really, there's only one team at the end of the year that, that can say that they did everything that they could. So were you highly recruited out of high school on, on, on any division one offers division three offers? Yeah. So coming out of high school, um, really in my junior year, I had uh, a lot of interest, um, from a lot of different schools. And, uh, again, kind of going back to that nutrition and, and weight training, I, I think I, in a way, I almost my senior year going into my senior year, um, I wish I could have done more to replicate a lot of the success that I had in my junior year. I still had a, a good senior year, but um, 
you know, I was recruited. I went to some good national camps, the Nike camp I got invited to. And um, there was a camp at Michigan State that um, at the time, Nick Saban was the coach there. And I kind of had a unique story for uh, the experience that I had at that that camp. Um, But, you know, I ended up with going to the the Michigan State camp and and they asked me if I would be interested in, in switching and playing safety. Um, which in high school, I played a little bit of corner, but not too much defense. I really was mainly a punter and I returned kickoffs and punts and then obviously played running back too. So when they asked me to switch, I was kind of on the fence and I was hoping for another offer. Um, and there's, their offer was, was more of a, a preferred walk on. Um, and so at the time I, I passed on that. Um, and so in hindsight, again, I would have, I would have, would have loved to have taken the opportunity to switch sides of the ball. It just my comfort level was on offense, and that's kind of where I had seen myself playing. But um, yeah, I ended up at St. John Fisher coming out of high school, and um, and then I transferred from there and went to uh, the University of Buffalo. So it was easy for you to transition to hang up the spikes and then uh, take off the helmet after after your. Your uh, college career was over with at that point. No, no, uh, <laughs> even, oh. even still, no, even still, I, you know, it's, I just, it, I love football. It is, it's been inside me for as, as long as I can remember. And um, yeah, it's, it's still tough. I mean, on, you know, cool Sundays or Saturdays in the fall and when the weather starts to change, the air's crisper. I mean, I still miss it. I miss it really bad. And um yeah, uh, so it, it definitely wasn't easy to hang up, but you know, <laughs> you're not always in control of that. So um, I, I tried uh, some different things. I looked into some different combines and things like that after uh, I was done playing. But um, yeah, nothing panned out. And I mean, love my family and, and the life I have now, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. But to play football is, is a special thing. So I was blessed to do it while I could, and, and, but I would have loved to have played after. Let me ask you, do you have any regrets regarding your high school or college careers? Yeah, I mean, I think it, the regret comes from, I think I always had kind of a sense of responsibility. Um, I felt like I was given really good opportunity. I was coached by some awesome coaches at NT. Um, and I always kind of had a dream and aspirations that there would be, I could be the person that would you know, go to a big school or, or go to, you know, the professional level and, and then just kind of bring that back to, to NT. And, um, you know, that didn't happen. So, I, you know, I, I, there's some things I, I wish I could have done better um, from a personal standpoint, but at the end of the day, you know, I had a great career. I played with great people and, um, but yeah, I, I don't know that there's any one thing I'd say I regret. I, I felt like I gave everything I had at the time, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. There's things that I wish I, I could have done to push myself a little bit further, a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I I think those are probably the, the main things. You were inducted into the North Tonawanda Football Hall, Hall of Fame in 2016. What did that induction mean to you? I, well, when I first found out about it, I legitimately you know got teary-eyed and and cried because there's just so much that you get from the program um i mean from the spaghetti dinners to uh the hot dogs after the four-way scrimmage um the friends you meet the people you meet the coaches that you have i mean just to be a part of the history of of north tonawanda football um was just it's yeah it was something that i'll never forget um and the timing of it was really cool too, because um, I have two daughters and uh, they're eight and six now, but they were both born and were able to be there and, and being able to walk on the field and um, to have them be a part of it was really cool. If you met somebody off the street or maybe have, was having a conversation with a business associate and you started talking about high school football, what would you tell them about playing at North Tonawanda? <clears throat> hmm. Well, tell them it was the best days of my life. Um, and I'd also tell them that, you know, if this was a football conversation, that a lot of schools and conversations I have had, 
a lot of schools will have a coach that's kind of a generational coach. You know, this coach that we had in the seventies was great. And that was kind of like the one coach that that school has. And I feel like with NT it's, it's, and I know that there's been some hiccups over the past, you know, few years or whatever, but it was like, you look at George Vetter and then you look at Dave Anastasi and then you look at Eric Jancy and, and the fact that I got to play with two of them is, is fantastic. But I think that, I mean, they, they, they shape, boys into men um and i so yeah i would just say the tradition the history is you don't see that especially up in the north i mean some of the programs in texas and florida you know they'll have rich traditions and they get tons of people in the stands um because that's kind of a way of life but in new york i don't think there's a better program than, than nt one final question we've gone over a few topics here in, in this conversation what haven't I asked you or what would you like to talk about? Well, um, maybe just a quick story because I think this kind of embodied uh, NT football for me. Um, so kind of going back to uh, my junior year, I was going into my senior year. It was, it was early on in my senior year. And um, Todd Warmington, as, as I had mentioned, was graduated the year before I did. So he, he was gone. He was at Bucknell playing. Um, and again, this was going a while back, but he was dating a teacher's daughter. Uh, and I had that teacher as a math teacher. And early on in the school year, she handed me this, this envelope. And, and so I opened it up to a kind of strange thing to happen in, in class. Um, but I opened it up and this is long letter from Todd. Um, just talking about passing the torch and, you know, how much, um, I <laughs> kind of get emotional thinking about it, but yeah, it was just about passing the torch and how much, um, you know, he put on the line for, for NT and, and kind of, you know, it was my turn and, and my job to do that. And, you know, not being a really vocal person, I'm always try to be more of a leader by example. Um, but I still have that letter today. Um, and yeah, it just meant a lot. And so I tried to do that for uh, the players that came after me too. And um, yeah, I was just, that's what NT football is about. And um, yeah, so that was probably the, the one story. The one thing that always sticks out when I think about it is, is, is him doing that and going out of his way to, to continue to support, even though he was off doing his own thing, you know, at, at the next level. Terrific. Jeffrey Gain, it's been a pleasure to speaking with you today. Uh, I you. wish you well, good health. Uh, best of luck in your, your career moving forward in Detroit. And it's been fun talking tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you. Go Jacks.